Hi everyone, today we are going to read the story Transformed by Jacqueline Adams, illustrated by Craig Phillips. Transformed. A dangerous mission. A voice came over the intercom. Dr. Waugh, report to Captain Ratu immediately. Everyone's tentacles went still. As I hurried from the lab, I heard an assistant whisper, do you think he'll vaporize her? Captain Rotu's tentacles were twitching in annoyance. They always were. Wa, I'm sending you on a mission. You will take the form of Earth's most intelligent species, observe, and bring back information. It was the kind of assignment interstellar biologists dream of, except for the danger. Was the captain beginning to appreciate my abilities? Whoever goes is likely to die there, of course, Rotu blurbed. So, as the least valuable biologist aboard ship, you are the right one for the mission. I felt my eye stalks pop from my skull. Sir, I, you almost killed half the crew with those worms you collected from Missima 4. The scientific notes had failed to mention that gas passed by worms on Missima 4 contains poisonous vapors. It wasn't my fault. I didn't know. But arguing with, would make Rotu angry, and making Rotu angry was never smart. You have one last chance, the captain said. This time, bring back something we can study without getting deathly ill. The monitor displayed an image of the species Captain Rotu had identified as most intelligent on Earth. He collected the data personally on an earlier trip. The species had no tentacles, no eye stalks. Trying to hide my fears, I stepped into the transformation chamber. If I failed, it would be the end of my career, or worse. Captain Rotu slithered into the room. The technician stepped back. Wa, you will return to the drop-off point at the designated time or be left behind, period. We will not alter our schedule. I breathed deeply to prevent the green tinge of anger or the orange tinge of fear from rising in my face. Yes, Captain, I under- Transform her! We've wasted enough time. I gazed down at my tentacles and wondered if I'd ever point my eyes at them again. Life on Earth. The levitation beam lowered me into a world of green plants and blue sky. With only a few Earth days to complete my mission, I jogged down what seemed to be a transport lane. I discovered that in this new body, I could move quite quickly. I had hair now, which created an unfamiliar sensation in the breeze. I marveled at the variety of creatures I saw. Some of them could actually fly. How I longed to observe their behavior. But first, I had to find an item that would satisfy Captain Ratu, or my days of scientific observation would be over. A number of mysterious plastic bins sat beside the transport lane. I paused to open two of them, a difficult task without my tentacles. They were filled with a jumble of unidentifiable objects, but I observed that the odors coming from each were very complex and strong. Perhaps earth creatures communicated with smell. I was sure the captain would be quite impressed with one of these bins, but for now they were too large to take with me. I trotted around a corner, and there they were two members of the most intelligent species on the planet. Clearly, they were having an argument, each tugging on a large item. Then a voice from, a fa from far away shouted, Charlie, and one earthling just gave up and ran away. The second earthling began digging a hole. He dropped the item into the hole, covered it, and went on his way. Was this object so valuable that its location must be kept secret? I waited until the earthling was out of sight, and then I dug it up. It was large, with rounded ends and complex lines and markings scratched into its surface. This must be the earthling's writing, a message so important it was hidden. I snatched the treasure and dashed away. In a deserted spot, I buried it again for safekeeping. Captain Rotu couldn't help but be impressed with this artifact. When I emerged from the bushes into a park, a two-legged earthling approached. Why, hello, are you lost? She stretched her mouth, showing her teeth. This must be an earth greeting. Doing my best to copy her, I stretched the skin around my mouth so that my teeth were visible and approached her. The two-legged quickly backed away and lifted a communication device to her ear. It was so satisfying to observe earthling behavior. 
Some four-legged earthlings led two leggeds around the park with lines attached to collars. Other four-leggeds entertaining entertained two leggeds by bringing them round objects to throw. Perhaps Captain Rotu would find one of those round objects worthy of study. A large vehicle stopped, and a two-legged got out and came toward me. I had an uncomfortable feeling that something was wrong. I offered my best earth greeting, showing all of my teeth. Before I could flee, the two-legged slipped a noose around my neck. He dragged me to the vehicle and hoisted me into a cage inside. As the vehicle rolled away, the horrible realization hit me. The two-leggeds were in control. Running out of time. I heard rumors that Captain Rutu had failed every biology class at the academy. Now, stuck in an overcrowded earth prison in a four-legged body, I realized that the rumors must be true. Roxy, the black and white inmate in the next cell, gazed at me with intelligent eyes. As the jailer passed by, the muscular inmate in the cell across from mine threw himself against his gate and barked furiously. Easy, Chico, the jailer said. After three Earth days of watching and listening, I had learned that this was a death row prison and that some inmates, including Chico, would soon be executed. Two-legged visitors could issue a pardon, but Chico had attacked a two-legged. He was doomed. Executions were scheduled for the following morning. Chico, hopeless, dropped his scarred body onto the cement floor. I fought an urge to do the same as my rendezvous with the ship. My sole chance to return home was only hours away. The door opened and a two-legged entered. Two smaller members of her species, likely her offspring, came with her. The offspring stopped at my cell and offered me the earth greeting. I didn't return it. Better safe than sorry. Mom, look at this one, said one, of, one offspring. A jailer took me out of the my cell and the offspring ran his hands all over me. This must be a bonding ritual. I needed to please the mom to get a pardon. The best way was probably to imitate the earthling's behavior. I stood up on my back legs and ran my paws over the mom. She shouted one word of approval, off. Then she stepped back so quickly that the contents of the bag she was carrying spilled. A flat, thin object caught my eye. I lunged for it before the jailer pulled me away. The mom did not issue me a pardon. But hidden in my mouth, I carried hope back to my cell. Escape. That night, after the jailers left, I took my prize from its hiding place. I slipped the object through the gap in the gate and wiggled it until the latch pushed back. The gate swung open. Roxy, ears perked, watched. Chico didn't lift his head, but followed me with mournful eyes. Remembering the executions that would soon occur, I paused at the door. I was permitted only to observe, not to interfere with my with inner, internal matters on this strange planet. But my conscience tugged me with the force of a black hole, and I looked back. Two rows of earthlings gazed at me. Why not? Captain Rotu would never know. From the outside, the latches pushed back easily, but I pushed the handle on the door to the reception area, and an alarm blared. I ran to the outside door. It had a knob. I pushed at it, but nothing happened. Tried again, but my paws kept slipping. Sirens approached. Frantically, I pawed at the door. I would be stuck on this planet in in an alien body for as long as I lived, which wouldn't be long. Chico watched me struggle with the door. He turned away. He must know it was useless trying to turn the knob. I felt panic rising. Then... From a running start, Chico jumped onto a desk and leaped through a window, shattering the glass. The other earthlings followed. I boosted one who couldn't reach the windowsill before I jumped out, too. Vehicles with flashing lights neared and we ran. We zigzagged through alleys and across yards. Only minutes remained till the rendezvous, but I had to make one stop. Desperately, I dug until I found the artifact with the strange writing on it, with the strange writing. Then I ran on. In the glow of the waning moon, the ship hovered over the rendezvous point. I dashed beneath it and felt heat as this levi- as the levitation beam lifted me. I hoped the earthlings would find safety somewhere. I looked down. Roxy had herded the inmates into the levitation beam, every one of them. Oh no, what would Captain Rotu do? As the hatch closed, the ship filled with frightened whimpering, mostly from me. I held out the artifact, but Captain Rotu ten- 
but Captain Rotu, tentacles quivering, knocked it to the floor. He opened his mouth to roar at me, but at that moment Chico lunged at two technicians who turned magenta and ducked behind a chair. Captain Rotu's tentacles shook with laughter. I like this earthling, he said. I'll make him my personal assistant. Good job, Wa. He patted Chico's head, and the four-legged wagged its tail. It was the first time I'd seen either of them express ex affection. Epilogue. Since my return, all refugees have been assigned to assistance to crew as assistants to crew members, and I made an unexpected discovery. The crew are in better moods, and the atmosphere in the ship is less tense than before the Earthlings arrived. Even Captain Rotu hasn't seemed as menacing lately. Of course, the results of this beer experiment need to be tested on a much larger scale. Therefore, I'm recommending that more death row inmates be recovered from Earth's prisons. My mission was a success. My only regret is that I was unable to bring those mysterious plastic bins back to our planet for further study. Perhaps next time.